I was fine for eating dinner. I, it was like it was always my time, but uh, you have to learn to adjust. You, you start you're with someone for a while or whatever. They want to eat <laughs> earlier, like regular human beings. It's like like Ryan, what adjust. time do you do you go to eat dinner? Um, six thirty, seven o'clock. See, for real. he's a decent human being, Danny. Look at this. For real. Uh, yeah, he's grown not only a mustache, but a proper goatee and not just a soup saver. I, that is the result of what Star likes, okay? It's kind of almost a Salvador Dali-esque. It's getting to that point. Getting We're talking the about point. the persistence of time with you now, Danny. Look, I think it's very weird that people eat dinner at 6, 7, they feel like my grandparents. This is unfriggin' believable. Okay, uh, and also let's go, let's get into it. What would what is your favorite? What is your favorite dinner? Like, if you're gonna go make you make your own dinner, what are you gonna make for dinner tonight? What's I it gonna be? Order a pizza. Oh come on! Come on! What's the matter? Or, whatever, whatever. Star cooks of all. Oh brother! Oh, okay. here we go. Yes. Whatever star cooks. She is currently, as per United States Customs, not in Brazil right now. So mm -hmm. Danny Carvalho is going to go to the fridge. She's going to say, you know what? Yeah, Maybe I'm pizza. pizza. Now. What? Also, pizza. Let's, uh, let's say this. Okay, you, you, we know he's going to eat pizza. What are your go-to? What is a Brazilian go-to pizza toppings? Uh, Brazilian pizza is very unique in that regard. I would probably go like a good pizza is half four cheese. You have mozzarella, you have catupiry, you have sure. uh, parmesan, and you have uh, what's the fourth one? These are all cheeses. That they've just made up most of those cheeses. They just made up. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the other like half it. would be mozzarella with turkey breast. Turkey breast, okay. Turkey breast on pizza. It's an uh, yeah, it's an un, it's an uncommon it's an uncommon topping here. It's not the not something that I've not. Brazilian pizza is definitely the best pizza in the world. Hmm, that is a that That's is a a remarkable they have the tomato damage. sauce very very on point. This is one of the things that I don't like about American pizza. It's too much tomato sauce. Oh boy. The crust is perfect, not too much, not too little. Mm -hmm. right, and and you really, you really get your toppings. Yes, like See, uh, but we, we we don't really have a sample bear, size here. Like I old don't get bear. Brazilian. Oh, you don't eat Brazilian? Is that what you said? No, no, you know it's the, the sample size because we don't. I don't. I've never tried a Brazilian pizza. Oh well, nobody I, really I, has. I don't know. They, I don't think they somewhere have. Somewhere in Toronto, they made up half the cheeses on a four city. cheese pizza. There's only two cheeses there. They just kind of wink at you. It's like, oh, it's <laughs> now, four cheeses. Now this is a double helping. You can really feel the difference in the cheeses. If you if you don't have re, re, if you don't have unique taste, it's not, if every cheese is the same for you, I'm sorry for you. Bana bananas. Okay, so. I worked in a, a few pizza places in my time. My favorite pizza is the uh, 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 Frutte de Mare, which is an all seafood pizza, which is kind of fucked up, uh, but tastes really good. Um, yes, there's the Quattro like Stagione. Luna? No, it was shrimp, clam, um, calamari, and mussels. All very good. It's good on the pizza. And then, uh, yes, there was a Quattro Stagioni, of course, is Italian, for the four stinks. It was also a very good pizza. It had artichoke hearts on there, which is good. But the weirdest thing, for sure, is uh, the hot dog Sweden. pizza. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, fuck. Okay, so I'm in Tallinn, Estonia. My buddy decides he's going to get sausage pizza. And it was it. We're right in the middle of this huge square and stuff. This huge old European square. And he's like, I'm getting a uh uh so the sausage pizza. It's like, okay, cool. 
And basically, he gets a pizza with a bunch of chopped up hot dogs on it. I said, <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, it's, uh, oh, this is just the way they do sausage over there. Like, yeah, they call it, they call wiener sausages. And because that is 100% just a guy that chopped up a bunch of Schneider's hot dogs and checked it on pizza and started laughing at the idiot Canadian that was in the middle of uh, Tallinn, Estonia, eating sausage pizza for whatever reason. Too funny. Ah, he paid for it later that night. I can tell you that, too. That's a story for not on this broadcast. This is a story for after the broadcast. It's, uh, what are we, week two? Week two of the second season of this goddamn thing? Two it's seasons episode, worth? I think it's episode three of the second season, but episode 25 up overall. Yeah, this is crazy. But just to finish the pizza talk, what's your favorite pizza, Ryan? Chicago style, stuffed crust. Hunk of deer. Well, yeah, I, I like all meat. Like, like you know, give me sausage, give me pepperoni, give me ham, bacon. Just, bacon. just a carnivore of a pizza. Carnivore pizza. Thank you very you much. You can appreciate it. Bacon. If he hasn't bacon. strangled it, it's not going on its pizza. So tonight, a Canadian, a very Canadian LG after is not. And I'm going to talk about the upcoming future of this channel and what? Canadian history and Whoa. what's going to happen <laughs> next Saturday. Let's go. Okay. Next Saturday. right now this is like a, a 25th episode that's like three seasons of the littlest hobo oh what and <laughs> and and the theme is, is that that Canadian Wait, right you. i know all the lyrics to this one oh, i only know man. most of the lyrics to the littlest hobo i give you the beach combers but the littlest hobo mm. There's a voice. So I was watching a, a British show for what I usually watch British shows, and they had a legitimate discussion about how good the Littlest Hobo theme song was. I never even would have thought that they would have uh, watched the Littlest Hobo, but I guess it's <laughs> CBC shared, shared their shit or CTV or whatever shared their shit with the BBC for a little while. So there you go. They know all about the Littlest Hobo in England well, for hey, some reason. Maybe tomorrow. That's we'll right. Have to okay, settle down. Really Do you remember? Right. Here's a quick Canadian trivia for you, Ryan. Do you remember the name of the dog that played the Lilith Soba? There was five of them, but it was all the same name. Oh. That's a tricky one. No, I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, related to what I was talking about, the dog's name was London. Each one. There was five oh, of them. Each nice. name London. Yeah. London. So there that you go. A little bit of Canadian good. history to go with Excellent. Those Excellent. Spring break Excellent. Is spring break being episode. Canadian something that you guys have proud of? Yeah, are you proud yes. of? Yes. 100%. Yep. 100%. Yep. I think How is this okay. Canadian prize like? Tell me about it. Well, it's pretty good. Like at any time, each of us can be prime minister. Uh, just because of the yeah, turn that's system. that's definitely not true. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure my turn is pretty soon. Ryan is mm -hmm. right in, like, how it works, it, it works like a toilet ball, and everyone uh, just kind of swirls around until they get closer to being Prime Minister. Ryan is right there. He is right in line. He's like, with oh, I'm right after you. According what? to age, I'm right after. According to age, I'm right after this you. Is an age-based thing. I thought it was all proximity. Oh, I'll take isn't it. there like oh, okay. an age proximity? thing that you have to be certain age to be prime minister? No. no. Well, yeah, no. I think you have to be what is well, it, 25 35? twenty-five? Twenty-five. I think. I think it really like, doesn't well, matter. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Imagine a twenty-year-old running a country. That I don't want a fucking sixty-year-old running a country, but that's what happens. We get old, old, old people. 
people that have already lived their lives have no, nothing to offer anyone 60 years younger, uh, anything. But yeah, they still entrust these people with all their money and their future. People that have already run their entire lives have so many biases from whatever they've done before, have no idea how the youth of today is going at once or what will happen come the future because it doesn't matter to them. They'll be gone in 10 years. But everyone still gets fucking voted in. Well, not not necessarily here. We got a guy who's a well, dad was was say, minister for a while. Dad was prime minister for a while, so they figured, oh, we'll just get his kid in there. He's like, neither one of them are great. But we haven't had a really great prime minister probably since World War II, but the Americans could say the same thing. Yeah, really. okay, uh, that's fair. World War II. You think that the Americans would say the same thing about their presidents? Really? Yeah, the last really great one is probably um, – uh, Roosevelt and uh, like what about Obama? Everybody loves him, yeah. But was he great? I think he was popular, and I think he, he was did popular. good thing. I think he did good things. I think there's lots of presidents that did good things, but was he a great uh president? Who knows? Bill Clinton did great things. Was he a great president? No, no. He was not. <laughs> George W. Bush, was he a great president? He was not. He was terrible. Uh, you would say Jimmy Carter was a very good president, but almost universally hated for whatever. He told Americans the truth, and they didn't like that at all. What was they the truth that he told the Americans? Coming that from they're Canada. using way too much energy with it's gas and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. They're like... And the gas crisis was blamed on him and stuff. Like, yeah, it was terrible. Like the nineteen late nineteen seventies, United States was, yeah, was a work. It was a piece of work. And that's what led into Reagan and Reaganomics. And Reagan was a no oh, terrible, was... terrible man. <laughs> he was not a good person, but whatever. Do you think it's fair that you guys, being Canadians, tell that about American politics? We had. Uh, we probably had a better view of it than anybody. We had an outside view. We still had all the uh, um, the channels. Like when it came, when it was back in those days, there was the three channels. CNN was starting up. I never had it or anything like that. I was still like a a three or four American. I remember when Fox started up and you having the uh, rabbit ears to get it. There was uh, three or four American channels, three or so Canadian channels, and the French channel. So. Our options were limited, so we saw what everybody else in America saw, but we didn't have the bent of uh, this directly affecting us. We could take a more like a more worldly view of it, of the mm -hmm. same information everybody's getting. I think that was a huge difference. Hmm. Well, I just know growing up, like myself, like uh, my parents, they always we always had U.S. satellites. Might mm -hmm. not have been legal, but but we did. I'm but CNN cops. was, uh, yeah. Danny, go ahead. Call the police. Call the police. Statue of limit. Statue of limitations, Interpol. buddy. Interpol. Statue of limitations. We're good. Mm -hmm. So, anyways. Okay, good. That's we a, um. That's a relief. That's a, that's important. Mm -hmm. No, but but we would always have the American channels, and yeah. CNN was very big in our house. It still is to this day, to be perfectly honest, with my mom and dad. They still right. watch CNN more, and that's because, like, really, like. It's, it's not more important than Canadian politics, but they don't show Canadian politics as much as they do the American when it comes to broadcasting. I think a big difference, Ryan, is that they show raw Canadian politics more. They show like what's happening. Like every day, there's a, well, you, a, a question. You get the House of Commons, right? There's a you question the and answer period. The 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 Prime Minister answers or can answer questions every day or something like that. Uh, for Americans, it's a big deal. They have press conferences that happen once mm -hmm. in a every couple of months or whatever. There's no direct oh, questioning right. by the opposition to a president mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Even with their State of the Union, it's a speech. Um, they had the one this year was a fucking shit show with uh, idiots jumping up and yelling at them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like, yeah. No decorum. There's a very little respect left in American politics, especially by the politicians. It's it's a oh, it's 100%. a real it's a tragedy what's going on down there. But 
But I'm just oh, saying. Uh, like, but, uh, also, congratulations for almost being American. And what and, you yeah. get, yes. look what you get yourself into today. Yes. Look, I come no, from Brazil. I don't say that things like that over here. You don't have to vote. You don't you have should. to. I this is already that. different in Brazil. In Brazil, I'm... Ob- yes. I was going to say, Brazil doesn't have the corner on how democracy should work, does it? I mean, not really, but no. I wouldn't say it's anti-democratic either. No. Canada certainly doesn't have it, right? I but think a lot think of things in Brazil, it. politics-wise, it is more good on concept very different in reality and practical terms. Mm-hmm. You know? Where the American ones, like, it's kind of interesting, like, being on this phase that, okay, at some point, all, I'm leaving all this. I'm leaving this house. I'm leaving this city. I'm leaving this fucking country. The pillow's this, going with you. The pillow's going with me, of course. Yeah. We yeah, paid a yeah. lot of to to give me this gift. It's a good pillow. Like, I don't know. First of all, like the whole citizenship, like takes years, years after marriage. Yep. So, not even in my mind. Like, and I don't even know. Like, I didn't, I didn't talk with my lawyer about that. I was so so far away that. I don't know even the pros and cons of being considered an American citizen. Like, Plus, uh, is it that big? You're like, your whole deal is you could not give two shits less if you're a, an American citizen. You just want to marry Star. You want to, this is an actual yeah. case. This is, yeah, you just want yeah, like, to. Yeah, like, it, that like it is like, a very weird thing. Yeah. Like, just for two people to be together, to be living the same space that what we want. Like, we have to go to a very length and difficult uh, process that take a toll on both of us. Oh, that's the yep. truth. You're mm-hmm. very starring and it's already very difficult to deal with. Like, he, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for weak people. That's for fucking sure. Like, not that... Like, all distance relationships, like, especially after they, you already had multiple times of interaction like it's not just something that you see on the screen something that you live that you experience for a good amount of time like it becomes worse when for you to be together uh, your life and your relationship needs to be analyzed and processed to by a third party that doesn't fucking know who you are doesn't fucking know who a star is and uh, this whole big deal is just because I was born here and she was born there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like... I understand why. I understand why for an, an average American they are so afraid of immigrants. Like, I, I kind of can understand the history because Here's one very interesting fact. Like me living in Brazil, I had to study a lot of other countries' history, including America. Mm-hmm. A little bit of very little about Canadian, to be honest. So if you're like very like in the beginning when you guys are forming. Of course, mm-hmm. a lot of Brazilian, but like a lot of European. So you understand how Canada, Canada has a hierarchy uh prime minister set up, whereas uh the closer you are the to the actual capital the better chance you have of us being a uh, prime minister. That's why I write and it's like second in line, third in line, something like um, that. Pretty close. <laughs> like that. And I don't know. It is, it is different. Yeah, I'm not saying that uh, it's a happy transition phase because it is and like changing, like moving. It's already difficult by itself. And when you have to involve a lot of unknown people into the process, and being judged just because you're brown in Brazil, like it, it's not it's not a pleasant experience. I'm not gonna lie. I did uh, nothing wrong. I how, well I I know no in lawful terms I, I have no criminal records. Mm-hmm. I pay my taxes. I my money comes from good ones to work. 
But because I'm born in Brazil, I'm treated to the rest of the world. And of course, not just with Brazilians, with other South American countries, it's from Middle Eastern countries. Like we are like third class citizens. We are assumed to be fraudulent. We are assumed to be criminal. We are assumed to be lesser people than the people from the first world. And that's fucked up. You think... Like, is, is Brazil not considered a first world country? No, it's not. Brazil is considered to be uh, in developed country, like in the same lane, like usually people put China, Russia, Brazil, India, and uh, South Africa in the same group. They call the BRICS okay. even. Like that are more like within the in developed countries, the ones that have more like they are more on display and look i think china like even though it's very weird stuff that happens that they're way more developed than brazil like china it is something that takes very you, you need to really go in depth with to understand like what's fucking happening out there we're talking about a country of a billion people that went from communism and now is but and still has one of those communist like cultures, say, thing, but then became capitalist. Sure communist. Pretty sure still communist. communist. In terms of commun economical, in economical terms, China hasn't been communist ever since like Mao Zedong. Died. It's not okay. communist. It's a very state-led economy, but it's not communist. Mm -hmm. Like and at the same time, it's a one party like the dictatorship, and that and the, for that, us what, the Western country. What's that party? Weird. What Short? party do they have? What's the party they have in in China? And that's the thing that you don't understand, Snark. Like just because the party's name communist doesn't mean that they are. <laughs> <laughs> In Brazil, the Communist Party is very social democratic. The Social Democratic Party is very neoliberal. And the neoliberal Communist uh, Party here is very fucking conservative. And the conservatives here are fucking reactionaries. Just because, the, like, I think you are having intelligent enough to know that using a name doesn't necessarily mean that it is what it is. Right? It's also fair to say now, one of my favorite things to do in the world is to bust your balls over something that really doesn't. <laughs> I know, but like, no, let's be real. Like, you guys are not Americans. When I have to talk about communism, that you, is something that I learned during college, though in college and in high school, because mm -hmm. I had education and I paid yep. attention. Like, communism was not like, oh my God, you're talking about the Russians and the Russians want to invade us and stuff. Like, no, we're talking about yeah, the Red Menace. Yeah, no, we're talking about like an idea that a German guy had in the 1800s or something. When he was living in London? When he was living in London or something like that, and it was seen like the factors and shit. And that yeah. guy inspired a revolution. In and oh and it inspired a lot of things. And the Russians and the Eastern like Europe had those experience like it is a a historical factor it influenced like almost half of the world and like trying to understand what went wrong what went right like because i'm sorry in terms of development industrial development technological develop going from like zero to ten china is the only one that did it china uh, this is worthy of analyzing. Of course, we are going to analyze with the Western eyes. Like, I don't think that not able to vote to the leader is something good. I think mm -hmm. that even though democracy is flawed to extreme, I've never seen an alternative better than it. Uh, but I, just, I don't think that having a social system of points to citizen is something that inspires freedom. But you can't lie that a, that a, a fucking country that uh, 
less than a hundred years ago. It's just a big old farm. Now has a cold war to the center of capitalism. And you say that, oh, that's just communist. I don't know. How much do their workers no. get paid? Better in Brazil, unfortunately. Oh, maybe. But how much business are they running? Like, if you look at, there's a reason why American companies keep pushing all their money over to China and stuff like that is because they the only free market they have is they're free to not pay their employees. They pay them nothing. They pay them nothing. Uh, they, 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 they make the same product you can make in America. It's not like the chips or anything like that. You can make everything there, except that in America and North America and the developed countries and stuff, you demand a living wage to do this. There, mm -hmm. they are told you are making this and that's it. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't take when, you, when you make when you make China. seventy when you make seventy cents a day. I'm not defending China or whatever. Yeah. I'm saying that what they have over there, which mm -hmm. gladly we don't need to experience, because yes. I highly think we're going to be the lucky ones. Like I just think what they have there is very different than what people call communism. And I'm not even a believer in communism. I'm just saying that what we have in China now and what is communism that I learned from reading Karl Marx and the people talking about him. Mm -hmm. China right now is not the same thing. Like, if you're going to say what is the most communist country in the world, it's not China. Is definitely probably North Korea. I'd say definitely probably it's North Korea. That's way it more. definitely is. It, North Korea is the, the most communistic. Uh, China was always had a thing where at least they changed their leaders every two years. That has stopped. That is mm -hmm. concerning. Uh, to give one man power for this long is uh, even against uh, uh, communistic. Uh, uh, ideals, uh, but uh, you could look at uh, uh, North Korea, where it's a communist country, but it's basically a monarchy as well. It, mm. it, it just has been passed down from generation. I think to generation truly, it's, 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 we it's, never it's been happening over there since. Then. I think the thing that was the most close to communism, like you were talking about communism. Mm -hmm. It's actually a little bit what happened in the beginning in Russia and those Eastern European countries at some point. I would say that a lot of like, communist ideals infected after May of uh, 68. In fact, some like Norway, one of those like Nordic things. I think, look. In a lot of ways, Canada has a little bit of the social democracy, which is a child of communist ideas on it. You guys believe that if you pay a little bit of the money that you guys get for this fund that goes through all the health system to entire citizens is a good thing. You guys believe in that? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we, oh, are, sure. we are a socialist nation. We aren't yes. communists, but we are we are a nation that has uh, quite a lot of socialist uh, uh, ideals. For instance, not only is um, that's uh, not a capitalist like the entire, the entire you agree country, that's not a capitalist idea. No, it's one hundred percent. It's a it's a socialism thing. So not only like, but there's things that work. Like we have uh, uh, Medicare throughout Canada or whatever. It's guaranteed. Um, you can think about it what you like. You can try and find people that will talk about wait times and stuff like that. There's wait times with everything. Exactly. But my when my brother got sick, my brother got sick and passed away, he did not leave his family destitute. He, he wouldn't have he would not have um, uh, been able to get um, uh, insurance through his workplace at that time. Because it would have turned out he would have had a pre-determined uh, uh, disease or whatever that he didn't know. He didn't know. Mm -hmm. He didn't know because he didn't get checked. And guys, it's been uh, two years since my brother passed away. 
Everybody, when you get to a certain age, go check out your bee holes. It's not a big deal. It's an uncomfortable night, but in the morning they fucking give you fentanyl and everything. You fucking fall asleep, and ah, then yeah, everything gets whole... cleared in. But anyways, yeah. How many people? How many men die just because of too many? The... Too many. Too many. Something so ridiculous. One is too many. One's too many. When it's something, I, uh, I lost a month, and there's that. there's. There's so much education now, and you know we we're all Schmodown fans and stuff. You can thank Smets for raising the level of uh, education about Awareness. disease to mm -hmm. everyone and whatever in this community. Uh, yeah, it, like my family has to live with the fact that not a lot of people pay attention. So I got it done. Uh, I don't have to get it done now for five years, so yeah. uh, I'm grateful for that. And but it's something I'm gonna have to keep doing for the rest of my life. And it is not; it's a, one difficult night, guys. And it's not; it's not a hugely difficult night. You just get through it. It's peace of mind. It's peace of mind for you. It's peace of mind for your family. Just do it. Anyways, now that our PSA is done and a very special uh, LGRN after strike. Uh, Yes, my my brother didn't go bankrupt. Like he had all kinds of procedures, and he was put into hospice care for a little bit and stuff like that before mm -hmm. he pulled over. He never had to pay for it, so it would have cost tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars because it was so aggressive. By the time they found out, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, that's a great thing for Medicare. Here's the thing: uh, you live in Ontario, Ryan. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. I live. I live in Manitoba. Now, Manitoba, like where better. you live, you have your choice of where you're going to go get your um, car insurance. You can get, yes. and there's different levels of stuff. Manitoba Yeah, I can has, shop around. Yeah, Manitoba is Manitoba Public Insurance. That's it. We got, That's it. <laughs> we got one place. So we're very socialist, and we've had the New Democratic Party oh, in power yeah. on and off here for decades and stuff like that. So it's, it's just to say, okay, now he's gone. Okay, let's speak about Russians real quick. Um, <laughs> this is concerning you, Buster. Um, Alexa Yashin, fan? Like, like, and this is saying, like, you mm. were, like, in the kind of Ottawa area, which I'm sure just fucking hates Alexa Yashin. But you're also a New York Islanders fan. Who should also I'm kinda, hate I'm, Alexa Who should I'm, also I'm, hate I'm, Alexa Yashin? I was going to say, I'm kind of torn between both, but no, I'm not. Yeah, you know, hey, a bust, not, not a, a bust. Yeah, how about uh, how about Zdeno Chara? Like, as a as an Islander fan, um, were you an island? You you were an Islander fan from when you were a kid. Was it a big yes. deal for you that that trade that sent him over to Ottawa? Or no, no, but I was more ups. I was more kind of upset that they brought him back for one year. Yeah, that was that weird. was a complete waste. Complete that was, waste. That was odd. He should. Yeah, I, I 100% thought he, there was a good chance he could come to Winnipeg. He was just the kind of guy they needed, just somebody on the back end that, you know, has won that they That's needed. Right. And they also the, they had Logan they had Logan Stanley there, six foot eight, who's yep. in the kind of same range and stuff like that. Just learn from the Daniel Charter. Exactly. Like, pay him twice what he wants. Pay him twice what he wants. Exactly. Anyways, whatever. But the, big, uh, the biggest, but, I will say, though, the biggest bust in New York Islander history, yeah. Brett Lindros. Yeah, he got hurt though, didn't he? I was well, gonna say, our I, biggest bust. I'm gonna. I know two New York Islanders. I can talk to you about it later. <laughs> okay. Because he's back. We were just talking about the Russians and what they do to just the Russians and what they do. Yeah, terrible. To, to civilizations. Uh, the yeah. Russians. Yeah, like what the hell? The war of the Ukraine, right? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. My cousin went to Russia during the World Cup. Like, I have curiosity to see it. Like, I, I am very curious to see a lot of places in the world. Like, I have been to two countries only: Morocco, That's which is cool. That was a huge cultural impact, and the United States. You didn't go Which over was, to you didn't go over to Portugal when you're in Morocco. You no, because I was working. We were working. That was happening. The COP event from the UN. Yeah, we've talked you know, about the it. one for climate. Mm -hmm. So I was working. I went to the Sahara. That that was cool. So like, 
I asked about like if being Canadian is something that makes you guys proud because at least for me, I'm not a typical Brazilian, and that doesn't and that doesn't has to do with uh, me speaking English. Like there are a lot of Brazilians speaking speak English. English. Yeah, I speak English. It's, odd. Oh, it's just like I just thought I just thought I understood for Portuguese. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of what's coming out of his mouth. So yeah, where it's English, yeah. It's just like I don't. It's very weird that like politics wise, I, I always think that Brazil should look into its own interests, but cultural times like maybe because I had to, my mother was an English speaker. Like I always had very easy way to deal with cultural things that happens to very another child of other places in the world. Like maybe being a byproduct of the nineties create a more of a global idea like it didn't matter for me that I was Brazilian like I it was easy to access the same content the Americans are getting or the British are getting like so I also think there is a little bit of a historical context to it like if I was born earlier like you guys maybe I would be more influenced by remember? Brazilian only things do you remember a life before the internet? Oh yes, I do remember a life before the internet. I'm the last generation that right. knows a life before the internet. Might have been the last one, yes. When yeah. me and the others like me that were born in early nineties die. Just like, Just like me. Is the like is the end of an entire era of people that had some sort of experience before the internet. I uh, mm -hmm. it's very interesting because the early nineties and was born in ninety three. The early nineties people like the that's the millenn the latest of the gen the the millennial generation like because it's generation because generation Z is considered like nineteen seven uh ninety seven up more or less. Like Buffy, you can see yeah. some Buffy, yeah. there, there, there is a little bit of a like I can see some cultural difference between me and Paris, even though we are not that much far apart in terms I of think age. That you guys are very okay. far. Uh, the same thing for even with Star a little bit. There are some cultural oh. and we are just three years apart. But like I had VHS, I had I had K seven tapes. I I K seven K seven. K7 yeah, I have tape. no idea what they are. No, like what was that? Cassette tapes for music. Oh, a cassette. A yeah, cassette. We oh, a cassette. Cassette. Oh, I, yeah, oh, okay, we a cassette, cassette tape. Like tapes. A cassette tapes. tape. We call them tapes. Like yeah, for music. Tapes. For music, right? And I played on computers way before the or internet. Like I was born with Doom. Doom is a favorite franchise. But <laughs> Doom was released in 93 too. I'm months older than Doom. And I saw the internet at the beginning. I also like many people like waited twenty minutes to load a page and stuff like that. So it's very interesting that I wasn't born with the internet. I saw it begin, and I saw and I saw that beginning in spite of my childhood. That's the difference yeah. from more of the more the early millennial generation that they saw the beginnings of the internet a little bit at more older age. Older age, but I still have a little bit of the the analogic in me. It's just like it's very like it's nostalgic, but not that much. It's more part of oh, okay, it's something from the childhood. Please. But the thing more is that not only the internet, I I do think that and this was a result of a process that a lot of kids of my age had the same cultural influence that a kid from Canada, a kid from the United States, a kid from England could have. I think nowadays is even more than So for me, like going, for instance, in that phase of my life, like that, this is the first time that now I get it. Oh, I am a Brazilian. I am not a citizen of the world. They are actually like boundaries, they are actually like frontiers, they are actually like limits, and you're going to be judged based on what you were born. And I was like, wow. 
I think it was fun when he kept talking about uh, Doom as nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Doom is almost 30 years old, like me. Buddy, uh, the nostalgia. very first video game system I remember having in my house that I, I just remember seeing it a couple times when my parents played it was Pong. 100% I had Pong in my house. I remember but, all the commercials for, for Atari. standards now, 90, 993 Doom is, is old. I, I told you I got it, right? I remember, remember I told you I got it? Uh, I have it for my PlayStation. It's so old on the PlayStation, it doesn't like to play right. It gets to a point and it just won't. It won't do All anything. parts of Doom that wasn't in the PC, they're kind of suck. Yeah, like maybe I, I the said, Jaguar is the best one. I kept telling you, I'll I'll go get that newest version they have for PlayStation. I I think I even have it on the PlayStation Plus things. I can play it right now. Yeah, uh, you, if, you if you, if you want to do, if you want to do, yeah, but it won't play. It like it will not play. And I guess I could put it on this uh this computer or whatever. It's like. No, the, I actually, the, the original I only Doom, play video games now if I ever remember. The original Doom is so it, like because Doom was so important for like for the games industry that like you you want to test if your technology works, see if it plays Doom because the way that Doom was built, like it's supposed to run at anything. So there are people that put like on um, pregnancy tests and you they are able to play Doom in a fucking pregnancy test. I don't know how they managed to do that. <laughs> So, like, playing a watch, playing an electronic piano, playing a fucking <laughs> billboard. Like, they, those people are crazy. So, like, it, there is a whole thing. Can it run down, like, on the internet? And you can see the most weird shit that people manage to fucking put doom on it. What? Do yeah, you, see, what I, do you, I, what do you, I was going to say, what do you remember, right? Like, uh, I'm thinking I, Commodore Vic 20, Commodore 64. Big fans of those Ooh. Atari, and then Atari had that Gemini system, that first kind of knockoff thing, ColecoVision. Those are all to me the huge biggest thing. Deals for me. ColecoVision was the first one for me. Oh, nice! You were lucky. That was such a good, such a good. It was look such a good system. console. It was yeah. beautiful. The Smurfs, the Smurfs game was so good. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 was it uh, Zaxxon? I remember Zaxxon being awesome. Zaxxon. I think you, I think you played Dragon Slayer on that too, which was crazy. Dragon Slayer Turbo, was fun, yes. Turbo, so good, so good. Yep. There was a lot of good shit on that. And and then so we went from that Pop Vision. I think then then switched to the Atari. Okay, you got you also had the Atari. So the Atari, uh, yes, yeah, with the joystick with the button on the on the on the top there. Yeah. So I have uh, I have PlayStation Plus right now, and it's mostly for me. I always go like if if I'm gonna play a video game, I'm gonna go retro first, right? I'm gonna check mm -hmm. those out. So they have like uh, two Atari collections on there that have like Yars Revenge and Centipede and all these games oh, and wow. stuff like that. And I get wow. so excited, it's like shit, Palm cool. Fred, I'm gonna play me some Atari. And I, I started playing it for like three minutes. Like, oh, this is fucking terrible. I hate it. This is fucking <laughs> terrible. Like, uh, I would, I wish I had my party. seven, my seven year old brain would have fucking been going bananas for this. But my, uh, like my twenty, my twenty five year old brain, as it is currently, 25. Uh, yeah, twenty five. Um, it, not, not a fan. Not a fan. There's a couple of things that are fun. Like I still love asteroids. I still love asteroids. Asteroids yeah. is just a goddamn. Asteroid thing. was ported to the Game Boy, and I played it. On, on I never had a Game Boy. You know, I never had a Game Boy. I had that um, that PlayStation one that came out. PS. Um, I, I, I had a Game Boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think the kids all had the Game Boy, and they all had uh, the um. The Pokemon my, games and stuff like that. Pokemon my games. My favorite was Paperboy. Paperboy on Paper Game Boy. Boy. That's Paperboy. I remember that for Genesis, the Sega Genesis or whatever, or Sega Masters is one of the two. But since we were talking fun. about, Cold but now Zero. I got a, I got a oh, question what? though. I got a question. Oh shit! So I, I never oh, got it's a into Beach Doom. Commerce question. Yeah, no, I never got into Doom as a kid yep. because I wasn't a kid. I was a teenager. But when, how long? How much longer was Duke Nukem after Doom come out? Duke Nukem was nineteen ninety 
95 or 6. Okay. No, maybe 95. Like. Are they pretty okay. similar? Those no, no, no. They, they are, but like Duke Nukem is already like... When Doom came out, it was the first time we had 3D, even though it's technically not 3D, yeah. there are some technical terms that it's actually uh, 2.5D. Duke Nukem actually is in an engine that's definitely 3D, because one of the things that you notice in Doom is that you can look up and down, you can just look mm -hmm. like this, in the original one. Right. And Duke Nukem, it was, it was a red forward that we you could look up and down so that yeah. that was an advance for for the time and even though it was not the most ideal way they were they managed to do what they call floor over floor so like let's say in doom you can't create a room and then put another room above it and go from up and down you can't do that on the doom engine now you can because the Doom engine was modified over the ages. No, now it's very different. But like back in the day, you couldn't. In Duke Nukem, you're able to. Took a lot of time, but you were able to like. I can You can create a bridge, like a bridge that the water below and to go from up and down. Okay. So Duke Nukem was built on the build engine where the Doom was. Built in the ED Tech One A engine, hmm. we're now in the E Tech Seven. So, in seven it, has it come to a point now where do you think you own enough computer stuff that you could build a Duke Nukem S game now? Because they, it can be very po very powerful. No, actually, we live in an age where they call it the boomer shooters. Mm -hmm. They call it everything uh, and. There are people developing boomer shooters all the time because it has that retro aspect. There are a lot of indie games that they're even built like because one of the things that happened with Doom is that when the, the source scores were released, the source code, the source code of the game was released, a lot of fans began taking the source code and develop on it, creating what we call source ports. And by it, you, you could do stuff that the original could not like. For instance, online, like multiplayer in the original region of Doom, that wasn't a, you weren't able to, you at least had to connect the computers by LAN. They created source parts for you to play online with the internet and like true tr 3D rendering of the game. Like I said, nowadays you can do stuff. So, like, you, People playing Doom in the old DOS version is like very few. If you if you buy Doom now, like from computers, you get of course like the old mm -hmm. DOS version, but it runs in a port to play in modern computers, which is a little bit different. It tries to be akin to the original, but has a little bit quality of life upgrades. So like. If you want to play the original Doom now, you can play almost anything. It is available in any uh, console. It's available for PC through stream. It's available for cell phones. Even I don't know who plays on the fucking cell phone, but you can play <laughs> Android iPhone. Like it's not difficult. But one of the things that I wanted to ask about you, Ryan, since we have you as a guest for tonight. Is sure. yeah. We're talking about culture instead, like, and you're a dad, like, do you feel that, like, being a dad, that that your kid, like, has, like, very different, like, cultural influences that you had? Mm, yeah, I would say, I mean, obviously, I don't want to... I don't want to shelter or take away something from my daughter that, you know, I want her to learn from all aspects of mm -hmm. the world of life or whatever. So, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't want to just shelter her by what mine is or what my wife says or whatever. No, no, I want her to go out and experience stuff and, and learn stuff for herself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And while and you have say her that, own, have her and have her opinion on everything. 
Yeah. But but you did like show like the music that you liked for her or something like that. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, like I mean, obviously, you know, I would I would say, oh, this is what I like, but I'm not gonna push that on her or anything like that. I'll let that. I'll let her make her own mind. Do you think it's important for her to listen to Canadian music? Does anyone even give a shit about that designation anymore? Do you listen? Do you listen to FM radio, the Ottawa area, like, uh, and the fact that there's the whole uh, CRTC making sure that you have sixty uh, percent Canadian content per hour? No, see, like see, the problem is, is with FM radio. Well, the thing is with FM radio up here, like where I live, mm -hmm. it's one hundred percent non-Canadian. Like they don't right. have just, like they they don't have just uh, stations that played like x amount of content that is canadian yeah like we we have a couple stations up here uh so the one that i listen to the most it's 106.5 fm that's it's called the moose which yes, is of pretty course of course you know is. of course it is we get we get it <laughs> yeah but but they play they they're the ones that probably play the most canadian content yeah out Legally. of because yes because like my my daughter's favorite station is Jump 1069, which is out of she Ottawa. Listen to the radio. Oh yeah. I don't know. But, Spotify and stuff already exists, so I think it's like. It oh no, it still listens to radio. But the problem is, yeah, the majority of that show is is broadcasted from the states. The majority of that station, right? Right. So it's but so it's, it's there's not okay. really much. If it, it, it is it generated from Ottawa, then like, or is it are you receiving it from a place in the US? Like, are you well, close enough to being a border town? No, we're, see, we're, we're receiving it from Ottawa, which is bouncing it from a signal that is yeah, just across. By law, whatever. 60% of that station has to be Canadian per hour. So, I'm well, thinking that if, if there's a lot well, of if they, content on there that you just don't know is Canadian, which is maybe a well, good thing because it used to it used to be a like you could 100% tell uh, in the radio when we were growing up, you could 100% tell when there was going to oh, be a yeah. Canadian song. It's like great song, great song, great song. Here's the Canadian song, Canadian yeah. song after this. Like how many yeah, goddamn comes... times did you have to listen to Tom Cochran and Red Ryder right. growing up, right. followed by a Harlequin here, song? Here comes fifty four forty. It's like okay, Ooh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. They had a couple. Good, <laughs> they had a couple good songs. They had a couple good songs. A couple yes. good songs. But yes. no, the I understand what you said. The tragically hip was so popular in this country wow, because uh, you had to have sixty percent Canadian music, so they would play a couple songs an hour and stuff like that at their at the hip's peak. There would be a couple songs in there, and everybody would, okay, fine, because the you know what, like the you'd have to listen to something, like you'd have to listen to Sass Jordan or The Box if oh, if you true. couldn't uh, if if they didn't play yeah. if they didn't play it, then you know The Box had one good song, but they sure played That's a lot it. of them. Awful, it's awful. Oh. Sass Jordan is the worst. Amanda Marshall, come on, the worst. Well, yeah, I have no idea what he's talking about, by the way. Yeah, we're, we're taking over. It's Canadian it's corner, Canadian, just like uh, Canadian art, Canadian yeah. artists. But it's no, I, I think it's Canadian funny corner. that you guys that like. I'm not saying that Brazilians don't have. There are a lot of Brazilians that have like the Brazilian pride, but like it's kind of like you're pride of what exactly? Like, okay, we must must be one of the most beautiful people in the world, but like oh besides that, look like, at I'm Ryan not is... fan. Like oh, I don't wait, like wait, Brazilian wait, wait music. A minute. You're going to say the Brazilians are two uh, uh, among the most beautiful people in the world. You have Ryan and I on this thing right now. Like, come on. And that just proves my point. The attractive meter through uh, the uh, roof. We should put an MC7. We have to put an MC17 thing on this. Uh, ugly game. Brazilian <laughs> person is like an average Canadian. Oh. It's also probably Jeez, right. Sir. Yeah, okay, but so here's what I don't understand. So you're talking about Brazilian pride, correct, Danny? Hey, I say that there are people that have some kind of like this national patriotism, nationalism. So that all of I a sudden, don't. when the Brazil, when the Brazilian soccer team is playing, you oh, tell boy. me that all these people who have Tread no pride, careful. all of a sudden, Tread careful. 
That, so, so that's the thing. I do think because soccer is so embedded to our culture that, like, I don't care about soccer. You don't tell me, you don't hear me talking about soccer. I don't give a fuck no, about no, soccer. No, no. But no, something I, I happens in the World Cup that you have a fucking video of me cheering for yeah. the fucking Brazilian. I have a video of you going bananas. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's I, I will say this. Thing. I will say this. Uh, I think it's way different. Like the World Cup and like say Canada in hockey Olympics, Canada and whatever mm-hmm. is so different. It's just so different. Okay. Ryan. It's okay. so different. Yeah. No, I understand. You, okay. Like well, we lo- we love hockey here. We love hockey. They I have friends that they it's love like, they like are football. Carnival. Like, I, I I don't care about carnival. I might and for, well, that's and another for one. a lot yes. of my yeah, friends that's they, they, they're that's another one. carnival. Bananas. Did like that their fav- favorite like holiday. They like, get tired. I, of I don't listen to Brazilian music. I never <laughs> listen to Brazilian music. I don't have a favorite Brazilian band. I never like. I think Portuguese is a terrible, terrible language for for lyrics and guttural. Like, and, like and I'm being I, I'm being a heresy for like the history of Portuguese po- poetry. Like Portuguese poetry win won a lot of wars throughout the ages and like I don't give a fuck. So like I never had that like I don't like this is something very new for me, like having like like you guys that have like this Canadian thing that is Canadian. For me it's very weird to have something like Justin, like I, I love using Justin because first of all, he's never listened to the show, so I can always <laughs> not one. <laughs> I don't even. He couldn't pick me out in a crowd, like one hundred percent. If there's like four random, and I love around, using I Justin yeah, because no he's so fucking the average, like American. <laughs> yeah, he's one hundred percent an average American. He's the average white American. Like I, I, I love using him as a clinical because like. We're talking here about like health system in Canada and like how it's great at his friend. And no, America has the best health in the world. Let's make the rich richer, no matter what. Like, I, I like, I, look, it's the country that we're going to live in, in very yeah. soon. But like, this whole thing that I live in the best place of the world because here we have freedom. Like for an outsider Here's view from South America, like really politically, politically, you're gonna be living in a very interesting place. Arizona is gonna be very interesting over the next few years to see what happens there. I don't envy them at all, uh, and I'm glad I have now more than just a few friends there. It's very good, uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Arizona will 100% be interesting. And Ryan and I are gonna sit back. We're gonna crank twenty one twelve, and we're just gonna sticker at you guys. Right. Like, oh, we know event that. I happen. wouldn't say that I'm. Look, I don't know. Technically speaking, I'm Italian Brazilian. We're Italian law. I'm Italian, and we actually my my That's my dad's side of the family. The pizza. Pizza. Yeah. The pizza. 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 Not, I said pizza. See, that's what you do. The land pizza. <laughs> so my my this that side of my family, they are, they are reclaiming their Italian citizenship, and because I'm the heir of basically my entire dad's family, like that goes with me. So like, okay, I'm not paying for any of the shit my dad is. I'm like, if I need to sign some documents, I sign. Do I care of being Italian? No, I don't speak Italian. Like it, Italy seems to be a very nice country to live. And at least to visit. Yeah. But like I also don't care about Italy. I don't care about Rome. Don't care about Italian pizza. I think Italian pizza sucks. Brazilian pizza is way better. I don't care about science books. I don't care about the French I took. What I do know is I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what? But like, do you understand that, like, for me, be. nationality doesn't mean a thing. I marry an American woman that comes from a Mexican family. You know what that means for me? Nothing. Yeah. You know I mean, it means? it means a little bit in some terms of values because 
I do it's think to the new that, world order. Like this is what should happen. Everybody can be blended. It's not a big deal. Like yeah, no, this is. I do think that like that with everyone being so close. Like Ryan is way the shit out in uh, Ottawa for some reason. You're off in uh, Brazil, wherever that is. And I'm here in the center of the universe, the center of the new modern universe here in Winnipeg. Uh, but we can all talk to each other at the same time uh, about the same thing. This like this stuff wasn't even fathomable. No, like, 30, it's something that is years. even oh. interesting. I, oh, oh. One of the things that me and Sark saw, like, I believe that my family-in-law, which hasn't met me yet, actually, like, I, oh met, I met one of the star sisters and I met my mother-in-law and I think that's going to be it, to be very honest with you. Like, I'll, they have a little bit of a Mexican values on them that Star doesn't have. Star is a man. She, for a lot of circumstances of her life, she, she goes to the American dream, American values. Like, they're... Not necessarily, we're not talking about the stereotypical white American middle class family values, but American values. But like, for me, I don't know if it's going to be important for my children to know Portuguese. Let's say with me and start having a family in America, I don't know if I see the necessity of them learning Portuguese to be cool. Like yeah. Portuguese, it is still a I'm sure that language. Up a little. Like it I would depends like on how, it depends on how much you speak at home. Like my mother, my mother, her fr first language is French. Uh, her uh, she grew up with her grandmother, Mamere, who lived with us. First language French. Do I speak French? Un petit petit peu, because they, <laughs> they, spell, they spend most of the time speaking English. So, yes, I, I had as much French as I could take in school. I had a couple of words I could use to use in uh, when they would have, like, a contest or whatever. It's like, uh, use a French word to stump people. I'd say, okay, l'arc en ciel. Uh, and that would <laughs> stump everybody forever. L'arc en ciel means rainbow. Uh, I was uh, uh, quite young when I was told that or whatever. It's like, that will stump everybody forever. And it did. So, yeah, I liked it. Like, there's, there's like, a, I, could I have a conversation in French? When I was in Paris, when I needed to know French, it was there. I could understand. I had a better time reading it than speaking it. I can read it. And it goes but through my head, and I can understand it better than I can speak it. That's what I've always not understood because the French we get taught here is different. Not much different. It's not the much way. Different? No, it's the way we speak it. It's, it's, we it's have the an dialect. accent. It's the we dialect. have an accent. We have a one hundred percent accent. Okay. Uh, like especially when you consider uh, um, uh, Parisian French. Like, mm -hmm. and it's di there's different dialects as you go through France, as there is in any country. Yeah. But like a Parisian French and uh, a Quebecois French, all right. A Parisian French would be like a like you like a Downton Abbey style upper crust English accent, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the Quebec Quebecois French would be like that. Cash me outside, like yeah, that, that that's how it sounds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Even Fair like the, the even the most upper crust Quebecois French they have a one hundred percent accent to the Parisian. Okay. So, Fair yeah. enough. I could no, that makes sense. Yeah, I could make I could make a out a little bit. I could make out a little bit enough to get me by. I could I could buy a beer. I could uh, ouais, ouais, le yeah. salle de bain or ouais, la toilette, which is a very important when you're in Paris. Ouais, the bathroom, or where is the toilet? Où est la salle de bain? Où est la toilette? That's all you need to know. Yeah, I still need to visit. Un, un bière, s'il vous plaît. That's all you need to know. But, like, I don't think that, for me, there is too much of Brazilian things that I think I need to pass forward, you know? I think there's going to come a time where you might, Danny. I no, think, so gonna, I think especially, is... especially, especially as much more time you spend in America, 
there's going to be things. There's going to be things that you miss. And it, as you have children and stuff like that, um, you're going to you're gonna just want to pass on something. Just something that you're going to have to give somebody that can help make you feel more at home kind of a thing. I think it's going to be different. It's different with the... Uh, when, with my family, of course, because everybody was here anyways. Everybody spoke French and stuff like that. You're going to be a, on a bit of an island for a while. So I think it's also going to be important for you to find... There's, no, there's I, I have there's a gonna theory. Be Portuguese people over in, in Arizona. You're going to find your own new community and stuff Brazilian. like that when you get it's up. It's Portuguese and Brazilian. Portuguese speaking. Portuguese speaking. Ah, Portuguese speaking. Okay. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to say Brazilian speaking. I know that's not right. Danny, yeah, you're already far off from most Americans. I might as well be the prime minister. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, okay, Rose. we can talk about Ryan. Your camera is, is flickering. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's done that a couple times. I think it's time for a new it's one. Bleaching. This one's been pretty good. This one's been pretty good, but I only paid like 25 bucks for it or yeah, something like bad. that, and it's lasted like three what years. What happened, Ryan? You should have heard what he said about you. <gasps> I tried to defend oh. you. It was something. There was something that's about your open. orange sweater, and I said, "It's, it's fine." It's oh. like that's that way. He isn't going to get hunted. Yeah, the the only th no, I Why got bad I... internet now. I I have bad internet because we have a snowstorm coming through here, so my internet's unbelievable. Bad. Oh, should, that, that's you should, so Canadian. You I'm should live in balmy right. Winnipeg, where they Ooh, a, a moose, a moose balmy. ate my internet. Well, that's it, that it's happened. happened. It, yeah, it's happened. A, that's what happens here. I think the only animals thing... eat our internet. Our internet is a very textile thing. I think the only Brazilian thing, like I have a theory that when you're born Brazilian and you either become a very receptive social person that doesn't prejudge, I, which I think is a, who am I like? I don't take too much effort from you for start to eat talking to you and teach you with respect and I'm not going to talk to you and in the back of my mind I'll be suspicious of your character of your intention like unless you do something I'm not going to be like that I think that's the receptiveness of a Brazilian like we are very we treat everybody like very close to it. I, I think I inherit that but also I think there are a lot of reasons they are opportunists. They're, they're going to approach a person and looking to get advantage of. So what I would call like the most typical Brazilian. So that side of being receptive and social with people, that's something that I think is more Brazilian of me that I would like to pass on. But it doesn't go much, much further rather than that, to be honest with you. Hmm. Because I do believe that ca ca Canadians and Americans, they are more one called cold people than Brazilians. Oh, Canadians are more cold than Brazilians. Yes. Oh, I would say so, yeah. Oh, would you? Yes. You guys are more polite and nice, yes. but you're more cold. I would say cold. Brazilians are much no. more passionate. They're much more passionate people. We are more passionate. Yeah, yeah we are more like I don't, touchy I don't think that's and... up for debate. No. Okay. Yeah. There's no. There's no, like, there's no reservation. Must mustaches like this and a soup saver, just in case. <laughs> That's very passionate. No, but like it, it, huh. it doesn't have the. You guys have a little bit of a reservation, which Brazilians hmm. don't have. We don't have. Oh. We're more like. You might be right. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Fair assessment. I'm going to call you a motherfucker and. And say that I love you and like ooh la la my Latino blood boil like stuff like that. <laughs> Bananas. Okay. The, the Brazilian have. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are more of a recept people. Like we we treat people right here. Like that's what they call it. The Brazilian as colors. They they call it the that Brazilians are very cordial. Yeah. Cordial. It'd be a fascinating cordial. place to go. I'd love. I would have loved to go on to Brazil. I think it'd be You're fascinating. Well. I've had friends that have gone to Argentina that loved it, Danny. Oh. Nah. Oh, <laughs> Jokes God. aside, like Argentina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah, problem really with Argentina it, is that uh, they they are so so. Do you guys know like? 
back on school, there was like that <laughs> guy that was so much full of himself, but he was kind of uh... Hitler. Are you talking about Hitler? No, no. Okay, the guy good. back in school, like when you were in school, there was always some guy in the class that was so much full of himself, but he wasn't like an idiot. Sounds like you're talking about Hitler, but I'm going to say no. And also, you could also say, if you don't know the guy that he's talking about, it's probably you. And if you don't know, it's probably you. That's <laughs> what the Argentinians are. The most <laughs> like, that, like they, 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 they consider themselves Europeans. And they're not. They're not. They, they, they lost to the Europeans. The Malvinas are not Argentinians. You know, the Canadian, the Canadian and but they still had like the and they are racist like like Brazil is very weird for you to say to see like a white supremacist Brazilian like it, it exists but, like very rare in Argentina that's way more likely that you have like that's way more likely yeah they have if really I was gonna white. say one thing to the people of Buenos Aires ever I would say don't cry for me Argentina the truth is, I never left you. <laughs> Not in my wild days, my mad existence. And in Argentina right now, they are in a very shitty state. I don't know if you guys heard about that. I kept my promise. Don't keep. Did you guys? Did you guys know what's happening to Argentina as of late? Winning World Damn. Cups. I heard that. Now, besides winning World Cup, like they needed that win. Like they, are, they are facing like huge. They didn't. Like, they did not need that win. You know who needed that win? Canada. Bruce. Canada okay. needed the win. They've never done it before. Canada, I don't even remember Canada in the World Cup. Did they win at all? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on to something else. This is a terrible like, but like, time. Like for me, like Ryan told, like that he lets uh, his daughter like discover things for herself. Like not that I'm not going to do this, but like for me. I'm going to show my, my kids Doom. I'm going to show my kids Star Wars. I'm going to show my kids Pokemon. If they like it, good. If they like it, I don't care. But like, I'm going to try to. I would just say. Doom is more difficult. Because Star Wars and Pokemon, they're more friendly. I would say, and I think Ryan would agree, is that you're going to roll with the punches. You know, you're going to have an idea and stuff like that. Uh I would not uh, say I'm going to do this, or if you do, don't expect them to say, "Oh, this is awesome." <laughs> just roll with punches. That's I think that's the best thing any parent can do. Just roll with the punches. You, uh, I like, can still, I kids, can... Are, kids are going to be different. They're going to be different than you, and they're going to. Oh, there's a totally. It's going to be a totally different experience for you. It's going to be. Yeah, it's it's different. It's just different. So you have to roll with the punches. It's not going to be the same. I can, It won't be. The I same. can still. I can still remember when my daughter was four, four or five. And I said, I could not stand the show Dora the Explorer. And I'm sure. like, my kid, my kid will never watch that. I will never let my kid watch that. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, my kid was watching it because that's what she liked. Yep. <laughs> Her friends are it's watching it too, or whatever. So yeah, it's just Dora the Explorer. And I, I couldn't stand the show, but I'm like, if she's gonna sit and watch it and be quiet, of course, well, sure, I'm gonna let you watch it. <laughs> be quiet. Well, no, it's big. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. No, I understand that. But thankfully, this is far away. Like, I don't see myself yeah. as a father right now. Oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with introducing them to things. But, yes, you, you, you let them make their own minds. Don't push them at stuff. And, I have an important you know, like... question. What? One important question. You have a son, all right? He's 16 years old. And he shows up. At your dinner table with that mustache and that soup saver <laughs> are you proud of him are you do you are you what what would happen wow. i'd be uh how could you can't get mad you can't get mad <laughs> you can't get mad at him it's like i learned it from watching you that's all he has to say. It's like you're like, God damn, I respect your honesty. Cause by now you've had an American accent. You've it's lost American. your Brazil. You've lost your 
Brazilian Portuguese accent. And it's like, God damn it. I don't appreciate it, but I appreciate your honesty. Uh, the truth, the truth hurts. Even uh, these uh, 17, 18, whatever years later, when I had the choice of, uh, I had a mustache very similar, and soup saver, still tastes like a little bit like chicken noodle to this day. Uh, a little chicken noodle. <laughs> chicken noodle <laughs> No, nah, no, it doesn't taste like chicken noodle. <laughs> You're done? Uh, I'm just, I think it's a legit question to ask. I think it's an important question to ask. I want to know what Danny has a, like, Daddy, Daddy Danny. Daddy Danny. Has to say, has to say, it's like, uh, Good job. Like, like you could say that. I would say you good job. job. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. You. You. I wouldn't judge child. my children. At, at sixteen, can grow. It is a tremendous mustache. Sixteen. That's it, it, actually. Uh, I'm just saying there. that the the soup saver is is a choice. Is a choice. <laughs> You're not the only friend I've uh, I've questioned on this choice. I've had quite a few and stuff like that. That's why. I figure it's like um, it's very interesting. Have... The guy that doesn't have kids is the one talking shit. <laughs> I have three. I have three. I've all. Well, no, they're not raise. your I've, kids. I've, they're tiny. When you help, kids. when you help Whoa. raise them, when you have raise them, yeah. they're yours. How old are then when you? If have I have kids, anything to my name, they're getting it. So there you go. I'm How not going to though because I'm going to lose when it all. You it's one tremendous them. gambling thing. Is that? How, How old? old were they when you started raising them? 10, 10, 11, and 16, 10, 11, and 15. Yeah, they were old. Older. Yeah. They don't call me dad or anything. Like, they barely look at me in the face. But I was around. <laughs> I must. I wanted to see the talk of your life. Say, hey, this is Narc. It's going to be around. <laughs> Oh, they already knew who I was. I'm world famous. Uh, it's like, they were so lucky. You're not even Winnipeg famous. Smart. No. Well, oh. No, no, I would say, okay, I'm not. If I That's go good. to Winnipeg and ask, good. where is Lark lives? I don't think people are going to know that. How many people do you think live here? There's only like nine of us. Which is pretty remarkable that we have like a couple of professional sports teams and shit like that. And there's only nine people. By the way, Only Ryan, you, the you, you watched the last episode of El Job through Sonic, right? I caught a little bit of it, yeah. Did you watch at the end? No. Okay. That's good. Because we are, we are studying this this year. We are we are starting the campaign that Snark should travel to a deal. Yeah, it's not far. Oh, that's just straight down, right, Snark? Straight down from Winnipeg? It's one road, basically, yeah. <laughs> it's just a 13-hour drive. I think that Snark should do it. Well. Oh. <laughs> no kidding. I don't, I don't, 13 hours, it, it's long, but it's it's doable. I could also, you know. Fly, fly and then rent you a car. Fly. I'm not a monster. No, <laughs> I think you should go driving. Like if you live at your house 6 a.m. by 7 night, you're there. Mm -hmm. What? And then we go get shit faced. In the middle of the night, she's like, and, and, and then who get goes up, to jail? Get up. It's like I'm like, what's the, what's the matter? It's like the liquor store is about to close. This is when they have the most money in the till. And I'm like, I'm not like knocking over a liquor store. And she just pulls the gun. And she says, you are fucking knocking over this liquor store. You're earning your keep. And it's like, what do I got to do? Just drive. Just drive. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. And so she takes me to the local liquor store. She puts on the mask and stuff like that. I hear them say, shit, Adelia, again? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, not a, live, I'm not but... Adelia. My name is no. my name's Snark. It's my like, oh Snark. shit, she's fucking she's trying to blame me for this. Like, all right, <laughs> she gets in there and she just puts the gun at me. Drive. 
So I just drive her back to her house and stuff like that. But it'll Which be fun. very far away from the city because she lives in a farm, remember? Yeah, but it's, you know, it's the closest liquor store. Like I, I, I think it's so funny. She's saying, I don't live in a farm. Your fucking neighborhood has cornfields around it. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, uh, there's cornfields around me. And we feel those, it's it's not far. No, like I, I live I, where I, I live. Seen where you live, you live in I live way like, more like right at space. the end, uh, right at the end of Winnipeg. Like like I'm uh I'm a twenty minute drive to the cabin from where I live, and that's you know, well it's only twenty minutes away, but it's in the middle of a bunch of farm fields and stuff like that with a little, little bit of an oasis where the where the cabin is. So, mm -hmm. uh yeah, it's uh yeah. Ryan, corn, you live more close to wheat. civilization, right? Uh, you listen, no, you live in southern actually, Ontario, and like the Frenchy, live, the Frenchy. I live. Ontario. I actually live farther from civilization, civilization than what Snark does. Yeah, really. See, yeah, yeah. Petawawa is very. It's, it's not even a city. It's still considered a. It's a town now, not a village. It's a town. A town. They got not a upgraded. village. Very, very small. Like how how small you're talking about? Like what did 20, even be? 20, 20, 22,000? 20, 22, 25, 22 to 25,000 people. Yeah. In Petawawa. Which that is a very small, small town for Ontario and is actually quite a big town for Manitoba because <laughs> nobody ever wants to spend any more time than they have to in Manitoba. And I get it. It gets fucking cold here. It is a, it's a desert climate. So what that means, Danny, is the extremes. Like it's not, it's not like all sand and stuff like that. Because of the extremes in temperature, um, Manitoba will have, on average, every year, at least an 80 degree swing in weather, where it'll be minus 40 degrees in the winter time at some point. In the summer, mm. it'll be plus, plus 40. 40 degrees. So, so there's an 80 degree swing. It's bananas here. It is. If I incredible. wanted to live there, it still would have to go to a whole immigration process. Yeah, probably, uh, probably yeah. worse. It, like honestly, it's probably worse. My so buddy, you think it's my it would buddy, be worse than? Yeah, than my buddy, people. my buddy married a girl from Sweden. A uh, girl he uh, fell in love with when he was going to university over there, and when I went to. Sweden, that's where I stayed and stuff like that. And we went to Estonia and a couple of things together out there. But um, just to get, like, after they get married, just to get her citizenship card, like, basically her green card took another five years. She was After that, she wasn't allowed to not ever um, uh, gain any kind of social services for another five years or something like that. But afterwards, wait, and it took five years for her to get her basically canadian green card after they were married yeah. even though okay, they got but married she was allowed to stay in, in canada during the time she had a temporary a temporary visa or whatever it took yeah for five years even though they got married in sweden and had a renewal of their vows here uh basically got married twice uh, she wasn't a Canadian citizen, even though her children were considered, her ch or one child or whatever, because the other child was born after. But um, uh, her first child that's was, not a, my, that's not was a Canadian citizan, but she wasn't, even uh, though she was married to a Canadian. different than American, but I would say that the American, at least from what we research, like, takes up to 20 months after right. marriage for me to get my green card. It'll be, it'll Until be a then, better. I can't have a bank account. Wow. Really? Just make your own money. Just counterfeit it. Yeah. Print it. I just want, uh, this is what you have to do. Right? Counterfeit your money. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's legal there. Pretty sure. I don't think it's legal. <laughs> You'll be fine. Here, here's the plan. Next week, yes, there is a, <laughs> a great possibility, if not definite possibility, that Hopefully. 
I'm not going to be allowed to enter the United States anymore. Why? Because once we signed the petition and sent to the U.S. government, the Department of Citizenship and Immigration, yep, my visa, the one that I currently have, is canceled. Okay. Or it's not canceled, but like it's put in a limbo. Yeah. Which it's means postponed. That... it's postponed. It's no, no, it's like it's in limbo. I could technically go to the U.S. Pay for the airplane and stuff like that. There is no guarantee they're allowing me to enter. Right. It was like that before, but it was more guaranteed they're going to allow me to enter because, like, no suspicion. But after the station sign, there is no guarantee anymore. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem is, and <laughs> The thing that makes me cry every day, almost, is that, okay, they're going to receive a petition. Of course, that was made with a law firm. Like, we hired, uh, I had my first time in my life, I hired a, a lawyer. For them to say, okay, your petition is real, your relationship is real, we can proceed with the process it can take four months if they really want to know how real your relationship is i'm pretty sure there's an episode of lgrn after snark they could watch no you can't send the videos today has photos it, it uh yeah <laughs> if they're wondering but the kid can take four months which is a lot but doable in the or grand scheme year. of things, four months is or a whole pocket year just for them to say that I'm not yes, trying you're, to run my way. Yeah. Do you think that, that, that I will, do you think it's that I physically can bear one year? Wait she for can come over guy. It's expensive going to Brazil. Yeah. It doesn't seem like like for her it is like I'm desperate. I hate having my life in the hands of somebody that doesn't know me, that I don't fucking know, that has the power over. Welcome to the wacky world of immigration law. At least you just have to go through this once. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, yes. Yep. Only once, but... Yep. Four you months. Know, you could marry months, Ryan. I, you could I, marry Ryan, but it's going to be harder. It'll be harder to do. It's definitely harder. Yep. You guys can but have here. the same whisker trimmer. So I want all of us. <laughs> oh, do I have to, to kinda, give positive oh, energy? Oh, to no, that? I don't <laughs> you don't have to. Do you want me to shave this during an episode of? I do of not. Design? I do not. I do not. I want you to keep it forever. I honestly do. I think it's fantastic. It's fantastic because at least I get to talk about it. Like on it, like I'm, I'm talking to you honestly, Danny. Please keep it. I want you to keep it. Never get rid of it. You know that the person that decides is a star. You know yeah, that. star. Yeah, no, I get it. I'm. But like, do you think I, you think I rather wouldn't have a beard? Do you so, think I rather wouldn't have a beard? Of course I would. I want to make. Kenny says make you are it. not having a beard ever, and if you ever grow your hair past like. Uh, three four days or whatever there's there's legitimate shit so so uh, i want us shit. to to make a betting game okay not a betting not necessarily a, a guessing game mm -hmm. and we can determine the prize for the winner okay after good. it happens yes. so four to twelve months okay how long do you think it's going to take for the us to say okay you can proceed uh, I think you are coming from a country that isn't red flagged. I think you're coming from a country that actually does do quite a bit of business with the United States. Um, you have an education. You have uh, no criminal record, as far as we know. Uh, for 
and a half months. Like wow, if it, if, if it, I think it's gonna be fast. I think it, you're gonna be fast, right? Right. No you're the most re You're more realistic one. How long things going to take? I agree with everything that Snark said. Yes, because I'm the smartest one. <laughs> but you've also like they. I'm sure that they will take into account your. You know. You've been there before, stuff like that. I said, I'll say five months. Yeah, so there's like a two week swing there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, Danny, I think I, I think. think you are gotten into your own head and stuff like this too much. I think you. It's not. No, the problem, problem is not the case because if there were problems with the case, the lawyers would have said something by now. Mm -hmm. The problem is that I'm not the only one. And all of this is not doing digit like they actually print everything. Yeah, of everything. those people who want to go to Arizona, like come on, Arizona. I believe <laughs> that I'm going to get the confirmation for the first step, either the week after or the week before my birthday, September fourth. That's a long. Oh, wow. time. that's a long time, Danny. That's what my gut's telling you. But that, that's what, five, six you're, months. so you're talking six months, six months, five and a half, six months. I think that's too long. I think that's too long. Like, I think you're going to, I think you're going to get a notification where it's going to be fine. No, they uh, do confirm with, that before, they receive, before, they, they, they confirm months. they receive the, the, the petition like three weeks afterwards. Like right. they say, hey, we receive, we're going to analyze. But like they, gonna... can, they say, yes, you can proceed. I think we're going to take six months. I think they're not going to have any pity and they're going to send you to Arizona in August. No. Because after that, what happens after that? At least from what I researched, we're going to confirm this with the law. After that, they say, okay, proceed. Everything's valid. There is no sign of fraud, anything like that. Mm -hmm. They call the US Embassy in Brazil. They say, hey, this motherfucker blah, 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 support. Uh, he wants to immigrate to the United States. So after, I think, less than a month, the embassy gives me a letter. Hey, motherfucker. Yes, professional. In more or less three months, you're going to have a not a visa interview in Rio de Janeiro, not Sao Paulo. Yeah. So I'm going to travel. And meanwhile, you have to go see a doctor. Yes, I have to do a medical exam. Then to the United States. Oh, because they oh they don't want you going there just for the health care. Yeah. What health care? They don't have health care in the United yeah, States. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So what does that matter then? What does the health yeah. matter then? No, no, it's, it's like more like you want to see if up, I have any disease up, that is. You're giving up you're giving healthcare. Up, yeah. <laughs> like they want to know if I'm addicted to hard drugs or if I have any disease that is contagious or it's a danger to the American people. So crystal like meth is in a hard drug. Get a crystal. <laughs> like, if, if you have mental health issues, like that is a harm to others, like you're getting banned too. Like, so. You're, Danny, you're going to be fine. They're gonna I let know, you. because I don't like, harm anyone. As many people we can get in Arizona, they're saying. Uh, but I believe, like, 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 I'm being, I'm being hopeful. What they consider, especially what they consider the right way. Then you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be their model. I, you're gonna be the model for them. I'm being hopeful. I think, and this is being very hope, very positive. I will be in the United States two weeks before the end of the year. I think that's the first time anyone ever said that. They're very hopeful they'll be in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> I love going there. I'll be there in May. And we are in March 25. I get to, I I get to go back. Video. I get to go I back. I want to watch this episode six months from now. Yeah. I really want to do it. You can watch it in four and a half months when I'm right. We'll be doing it live from uh, wherever it is in Arizona. Tucson. But anyway, Phoenix. We, I also yeah. promised in the code open of this episode. Oh, yeah. That we need to talk about next week. Ryan, do you know what happens next week? I... I've heard grumblings about something big, but I don't know. So you have to tell me. 
Danny gets to immigrate to America. And like it was all this whole next week, that was all a lie, guys. Was like, it was a false flag. <laughs> it was one week, not four months. That's right. He's already got it. Well, imagine if it was like one week. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. We know you like whatever. We watch the new on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We're talking right. to the Canadians. Next week, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is the anniversary of LGR. Yeah. And wow, really? Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't know that. Three years. It's whole shenanigan again. So we survived three years on YouTube. We survived 2020, wow. 2021, and 2022. And now we're. To be fair, the last year, probably the best one. And Ryan, that's not the only part. Well, that's right. Oh, For there's us, more? We decided to commemorate, to celebrate three years of LGR. And it's going to be a special. Elger and Optus Narc episode. Oh no! Live wow. on YouTube, and not live. only that. So did this guy here live on Snark YouTube, live. unfiltered, oh, wow. unfiltered? Because oh. guys, I've been holding back. I've been holding back. <laughs> live on wow. YouTube. We, uh, we, I don't think I can announce the date, but is it a Friday or Saturday? Who fucking cares? One of those. I think it's going to be Friday. I think it'll be this coming Friday. I think it's going to be Friday too. March 31st. And not only that, the patrons are invited. Yeah. Oh. So, Ryan, are you going to be and celebrate the birthday of LGR? And- well, course i will do my best to make it there what time does this shenanigan start it's going probably to be late to be honest with you. it'll be about uh, 10 o'clock your time or so um here's the deal we're gonna get set fire to youtube uh, if there's anything left cool if not you'll catch us right here on the lgrn discord every week anyways it doesn't matter guys but it's it's gonna be a goddamn blast. Hopefully, having uh, most, I, how ma- most how many hours? How many how many hours is this stream gonna be then? God damn it! I I'm bet lot. like they <laughs> said that they don't want to do very long, but I believe it's going to last at least four hours. That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that people need to stay the whole hours. That's yeah, for me. Can, it's not. No, that that that's the that's the number that keeps going in my head. Uh, um, the last schmodown spectacular. Uh, Adelia and I were on for a nine-hour stream. That will never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, oh, ever, ever, that. never happen again. The fact that it's going to be more than three hours is something that I've already come to grips with. Four hours is like, okay, let's wrap it up. I think it's But I think it's going to go fast. But we're going to do something. There's like lots of people coming on. Uh, Lots of people, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, the differences between socialism and communism probably or something. i we'll, don't think we'll, we'll i'm see. allowed we'll to see. talk about that live on youtube after a few of the <laughs> <else probably>. nope. <laughs> nope no we're gonna talk about going to shit fall for things. that rap. we're talking shit at things and we get to host it which is lucky because uh let's which face mean it. that we're going to be on the stream the whole fucking night i can't Ooh. abandon you that's right to talk with people that are boring Oh, what? That's not very polite. These are our friends. Look, maybe a fair is going to be there. He hates both of these streams. He's against it for some reason. Yeah, he's going to be there. Uh, yes, I'm I'm hoping that we get a, a Justin signing. Uh, I'm hoping that there's going to be an Alabama beatdown. Somebody in the stream next week. But, uh, oh, we'll that's see. true. Yeah, that'd be, yeah. I have... I have not been on a stream with Justin in a very, very, uh, very long time, and he's never, never been on the show. Me. He's never been on this say, show. He's a duck. Let's get the premiere. Let's get the premiere he's of Hambone on. That's LGR gonna be like, oh, start. could you imagine? Uh, three year anniversary of LGRN. Okay, that's nice. But Justin but, finally showing no, up on yeah. After Snark. Then I can't use him. 
then I can't <laughs> use him as the average white American example. Oh, well, you can. I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh, you sure can. you can. Most average white Americans do not show up on this show. On yeah. average. Justin is for me is the typical guy that like get his grandfather boomstick and say, Get out of my property. Yeah. <laughs> for me, he's the average guy whose grandfather was making moonshine <laughs> and <laughs> had a fucking nineteen forties pickup truck and so like that drank drunk and threw dynamite out the window. That is one hundred percent who he was. We'll find Shout out, out on the Justin. show. Maybe on, hopefully next week. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, I know that hopefully Justin you guys find out off his grandpa. Like, shout out to Justin Grant's family. <laughs> that has fun memories of him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. He sounds like a good man. He sounds, <laughs> after what? Moonshine and throwing dynamites? Yeah, that's awesome. He'd be the fucking coolest guy ever. Could you imagine? Wearing a stray hat and the smoking like. Yeah, oh yeah. Fuck you. Just throwing dynamite at cars is awesome. <laughs> fucking, yeah. Keeps forgetting that his fucking, his back of his pickup truck is basically a mobile cell, which is an, like just a, a mobile bomb. His entire truck's a mobile bomb. But he doesn't give a shit. Smoking, throwing dynamite, listening to freaking 1930s country music on oh. the old. The the two stations that thing got awesome. I have yeah. I can't wait to talk to Justin. I'm sur- I'm I would be surprised if he isn't just living to that legacy right now. And that's why he doesn't. He's never on the show. He's usually shining. He's usually shining. Yeah, he's yeah, always working on the weekend line. Yeah, shining moon shining sh- is a he's business. Shining, listening to Waylon Jennings. Oh my God. Jeez, I was thinking like the Carter family or something. I was going going further back than that. Wow. I like it. No, we can't ask Justin what he thinks about immigration. We're gonna see right. if he shows up. It's it's gonna be a special treat if Justin. The last time I asked Justin what he thinks show, about on his own network on his own network. Guys. The last <laughs> time I, I asked Justin what he thinks about immigration in America, he said, "Oh, brother. Uh-huh. I mean, it depends. They they have a lot of special laws." Special law? What are you talking about, Justin? Maybe in Alabama, that's about it. Crazy. Insane. Like getting Justin to talk about the greatness of America is so... Like, like, he says, I think there are a lot of Americans that, like, they, they seem to hate this country anymore. They don't know what happens in the, like, when the Ferris used to live. I like just that so <laughs> Listen... Uh, I can't. I can't wait to talk to Americans about America. Now we should be able to do that a little bit in the four something hour stream we're going to do next week. But as for this week, I really want to thank Canada's favorite scientist and next in line to the Canadian throne, Ryan Christensen. It is an absolute pleasure. I'm glad you brought the sweater. Uh, so that you aren't accidentally hunted in your own home. Yeah, I. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, being on here for the second time. It's yeah, been a blast. Yeah, we tricked yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Tom foolery to get me on here, but it it worked. It worked. Yeah, uh, but you deserve to be early in the second season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But again, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It was a blast. I always love coming on talking to you guys. And you know what? Hopefully there, maybe the third season, we'll do it again. And you're probably going to be in the special episode next week, too, we hope. Not only that, he was definitely going to be. He is definitely going to be on LGR. And this coming week, the Playoff Beards is back with a quick little uh, refresher just before the playoffs. We are joined by Ryan, of course. Uh, oh, yeah, from our, all that shit. One of our uh, best Patreons, but any Patreon can come on to any show they'd like. Uh, guys, uh, just request. Uh, he is uh, wanted to talk hockey. He knows his hockey. It was a fucking blast. I had so much fun talking hockey with Ryan. Even though he's an Islanders fan, you can't fucking, you know. Everyone has their flaws. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yes, but it's a great episode. Uh, Adelia back hosting the playoff beards, and uh, you'll be able to catch it. I believe it's coming out uh, 
um, Sunday or Monday. So guys, uh, make sure make sure you're you're paying attention, and and much more attention than Ryan, who has already said I'm out of here. But that's fine. Um, he is going. Maybe yeah. they're like, they're honestly, like they're honestly, honestly, tomorrow will lie. It was it was an incre- it was so much fun. It was a, it's a great episode of uh, Playoff Beards, leading up to. Uh, what's going to be a hell of a goddamn last uh, couple of weeks in the NHL season, as Danny well knows. Yeah, you really think we're going to watch that shit? This is crazy. Talk. That's Why crazy. a Brazilian of all people would watch about the hockey? There's a hockey team in Arizona, Danny. They used in to be Arizona, I'm, I've seen Brazil. In Brazil, there, there, there isn't a lot of snow. Well, you're going to be in Arizona soon enough, so it's time. It's about time. That that actually has snow. So weird, right? Arizona of all places having snow. Yeah, it is weird. It could be weirder. It could be snow in Brazil. It's, it snows in Brazil only in the very south, close to Argentina. In what months? July? Uh, uh, no. Because it's in all backwards. Oh, no, no, in July, yes, in July. Yeah. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. I know Brazilian weather better than the Brazilian. I got confused. Look. Listen, yeah. between the two of us, between the three of us, who's the meteorologist? Me or you two? Me, Dr. Snark. <laughs> Doctor Snark, I don't think material is the the, ta- the doctor prefix. <laughs> to be honest with you. Anyway, Ryan, I hope you had fun. I did. Thank you very much. Guys. I hope your wife didn't get mad at you this time. Well, that's true. Nope. All good. Oh, good. So far. Okay. So far. So far. So far. So good. <laughs> I always I love good, having having. Uh, Ryan's advices to parenthood and marriage. It's always they always they they, they were way more valuable than yours, Mark. Yeah, that's probably right. Way more valuable <laughs> than yours. Yep. And probably well, next help. next week in the special episode, if I'm feeling like it, because that's how it works. If I'm feeling like it, this show is going to have new credits. No, actually, it's going to have a credit. Don't, we don't have a credit. And it's going to have a new intro. The f- oh, what? Mess- You're the getting best. rid of the song? Don't no, no, no. The song stays the same. Yeah, the song stays ah. the same. But there are going to be improvements. Improvements to the Ooh, quality uh, of life of this show. You can take away that fake picture of me that isn't me. That's definitely you. I have the receipts. I can show you everybody. <laughs> yeah. If you show the other one, which is like two guys with masks, uh, chin tied to a horse that you also have. <laughs> wow. Again, again, if one of those was me, I, I would, I would readily admit it. No problem. <laughs> uh huh. Of course, it wasn't you. <laughs> anyway, guys, this <laughs> was LGR and. After Snark, it was a pleasure, Ryan. Thank, Thank you. you again, guys. I see you. I can finally do shows a little bit more earlier so I can don't sleep next after a show during the night. Well, and we hope to see you next week. Again. Thanks again. Don't right, forget guys. to write the description, Snark. <laughs>